Victor Yu joins the show today. What's going, Victor Yu? How you doing? Hello, Aiden Luby. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Dude, fantastic. We were just talking a little bit beforehand. Um, we just finished up the semester. This is, I know you took 21 credits junior spring. I thought this is my hardest semester on top of being online. I was kind of driving, I was pretty much going insane, but we kept her cool. We finished this semester strong. How about you? How are you feeling after the semester? Oh my gosh. After a semester of like full Zoom university, it's like, I don't know. We, we survived <laughs> yeah. and that's it's like a that hallelujah, you know literally and i know like next like at least next semester for me i think i'm like like i said i'm taking like 16 credits i think and my first class is until 1 p.m so that's super weird for me um i don't know about you How, how's your schedule looking next semester uh for monday wednesday and fridays i basic i don't have any classes except for monday you don't have so, any classes on wednesdays or fridays nope just oh, that one man. senior project on Monday, and then well, Tuesday and Thursdays I have class from like twelve to five. I yeah. think Thursday is at like nine to it's five. Nothing but... It's nothing new, man. Nothing new. So, hey. so thirsty Thursdays on at Maggie's. Um, Cross your fingers are open. Yeah, well, they're open, but you know we're we're gonna hopefully they're more open now, or like because once the shutdown's over, at least it, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm going balls to the wall senior spring. So I'm sure all the other chemical engineers are going to do the same thing. So, oh, but, uh, yes. All righty, Victor. Well, first of all, I got to ask you this. You know, what's a hatter? Because I know you're from Hatboro, Horsham. And I ask you this every single time. And I don't care. So, can you Hatters. So, all right. yeah, hang on. Yeah. Tell me where you went to high school because this is kind of funny. So, I went to Hatboro, Horsham High School in uh, good old Montgomery County. Uh, so you, you ask what a hatter is. So fun facts about Hatboro. Well, that's what the town that I live in. Um, there used to be a town where they produced hats. <laughs> Surprise. And but the, I get not really funny thing. I don't know. It's kind of tragic in a way. But the chemicals that they use in the hats, I think it was like the early 1800s or probably late 1800s. I don't remember the history that much. But the chemicals that they used to like to make these hats kind of made them go a little crazy because they didn't really have much information on chemicals back then. And they didn't know that it would be like kind of toxic for them. Mm. So eventually the history, I, and it kind of made them like kind of mad and like kind of crazy in a way. So then that's where Hepler Horsham got the name, the Mad Hatters, <laughs> plus the Hatters. There's a picture that we had, um, or no, we actually had a costume, literally just a top hat. And that top hat would just come to the football games. It was funny. It was so funny. And then I think someone stole it, or like we lost it. What the? But so we have a picture. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really know. Someone stole the top hat of your high school. That's hilarious. Yeah. So now we're just uh, patters. I'll have to look this up. This is, that's kind of crazy. Um, but that's really believable, though. I mean, you know, you have blue collar workers didn't know anything about anything, just working in a factory, and basically made them made them go insane. Like, I don't believe that. Is there any, like, old abandoned hat-making factories that you go and, like, it's like a haunted house now? Uh, there actually the, are some... Thrills of the old factory workers. There's some old, um, like, buildings in Hatboro, like, on the main roads. Mm. It's kind of far out. There's this one house that's, that was across from the old YMCA that was used as kind of, like, a haunted, mm -hmm. like, uh, house. But... I don't really know much about the other yeah. houses. I think most of them were knocked down, but <laughs> that's all right. Well, it's all for the better now. I went to Upper Marion, so that's why like, I know I'm familiar, familiar with your area, so that's all good stuff. All right, Victor, so you're in high school, moving along, you're a Mad Hatter, and then you're also in marching band, which we'll get into a little bit later because that's really one of your big passions. That's really cool. Um, but I want to start with like you know how you decided to get into chemical engineering and chemistry because I know you to be a dual degree major, um, so I kind of want to hear about like how that journey began, like even in high school. So my thought process, at least in high school, I think it was like junior year or senior year, I don't know, between that time, uh, I had this, uh, chemistry teacher who taught well, honors chemistry, mm -hmm. her name is currently oh, we're accepted middle school now, but yeah. I really enjoyed the class. Like, I don't know. 
Okay, hang on. Hello. So yeah, I think I think we're back on there. We're back on. So you were saying how you had a professor or a teacher in junior senior year of high school who taught right. who taught chemistry. That's where you were for a mm -hmm. kind. And I don't know. I just really enjoyed chemistry, and I was like, this is really cool. And then that was it. So I then come to senior year, um, I took calculus A B and I was and I thought I was pretty decent at it and like I really liked doing math and stuff. Mm. So I guess I kinda came to the conclusion of like I like chemistry, I'm pretty good at math, but do chemical engineering. And wow. then I decided that I wanted to pursue chemical engineering. So in freshman year of uh at Widener. I actually did a lot of more research into chemical engineering and like what the industry, like like what we would do in the industry if we went into that career. Mm -hmm. And I kind of realized that chemical engineering wasn't really chemistry. It was more like processing uh, units. Yeah, like optimal. And it's just kind of, yeah. And I always like to joke around saying that we're kind of like glorified managers at like a factory in a way. <laughs> I, mean, I know, and that's like such a broad term or like a, on a broad statement. I mean, um, but, then I, true, but I mean, yeah, but uh, eventually, I don't know, just something clicked in my head and I was like, you know what, I'm going to add on chemistry as a second degree because we only had to take like two or three more classes to have this. Yeah. And when did you decide to do that? Was it so fall, sophomore year? Is that when you declared it? I think it was. Or sophomore spring? I think it was freshman, the end of freshman fall and the beginning of. Ooh, okay. okay yeah yeah I didn't, I, uh, I didn't hop on the bandwagon until sophomore spring so i was really kind of far behind but you know two is there now you're now you're fine it was um i think up until like sophomore spring is when the classes started to like yeah, move yeah. up in a way yeah but you weren't too far behind is there anything in particular that drove you like 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 you made you choose widener because i was kind of the same thought process right i didn't really know exactly what i want to do but i did like mathematics and chemistry so i was like all right let me just do chemical engineering and without really even giving any two thoughts about it um so did anyone anyway, like anything like draw you to to that i originally wanted to go to penn state main campus but then my mom and my dad were just like uh no uh, that's way too far <laughs> fair enough and i don't know i really liked penn state it was a really big school. It definitely had they definitely had their own culture right in the middle of uh, nowhere, Pennsylvania. I, I thought it was really interesting, location yeah. wise. But for Widener, it was it was like a really small school, you know. And like the, the class sizes were really small. And actually, the first time I actually I visited Widener was at a robotics. It was robotics. It was a mousetrap competition mm. that my high school class, engineering class we went to compete in that. And that was when I got like our, my first little tour. And even though we were only in the, like the gym area, the right. athletic center, there's something about the school which just felt very homey in a way. Mm. And then the second time that I visited, just like my gut feeling was just like, this just seems pretty, I don't know. It just seems pretty nice. It was really small and it had like, and it was also like 40 minutes away from home versus right. five hours. Yeah. And something, and I just kind of knew that it was kind of, I don't know, a place, my place to go. For sure. You know, it was crazy because, like, I mean, the differences between here and Penn State are, like, I mean, they're, they're like, totally worlds apart. So it's kind of interesting you wanted to go to Penn State, but then ended up at, like, a small private school compared to a big state school, which has over, like, 70,000 people there. Um, but maybe, maybe you made the right choice, you know? So, I, I think so. I, I really – enjoyed my time here mm -hmm. um i kind of want to i kind of want to talk about your um music music real quick um before we go any further because i know it's one of your biggest passions um so do you mind telling us like what exactly that you play and like how long you've been playing it for um and then maybe like what you're doing now do you want me to start from like you can start from birth okay. yeah what, what were you doing at birth? were you playing at birth <laughs> well i was um I was being birthed by my mother, <laughs> um, but uh, let's go back. Let's go down five years later, <laughs> and this was when I was in kindergarten or first grade. Or no, off, and I was in fifth grade, and we had the option to do to either do orchestra 
afford to do band. Mm. And I was like, I want to learn how to play the drums. And then my mom was like, no, that's too loud. And I was like, I want to learn how to play the trombone. And she said, no, that's too loud. <laughs> so then, um, so my sister, she's like five years older than me. She played the violin and I was like, you know what? I'll play the violin. And let's go down, let's go down like three more years. And this was in eighth grade. One of uh, my good friends in middle school asked me to do marching band with her because we were looking for people. And I was like, sure, uh, I'll try it out. So then I ended up going to a rehearsal in eighth grade and I was like, this is kind of fun. And then I just kind of stuck with it. And then when I went into my high school uh, marching band, like my high school marching band was very like, I don't know, they, they, we ran like the pro director ran it very seriously in a way. And like his kind of philosophy of running a marching band program was like a successful group is when the students run the groups or like runs themselves and themselves in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And the director, he, he was in the Marines. So like <laughs> he yeah. kind of knew what he was doing and we were like, and when I look back and I like watch old videos in high school, I was like, dang, I was like, we're actually like kind of good, especially with drum lines in like this area. How big we, was your band in, in uh, Hapro? I assume it's pretty big. Isn't it? It's kind of really cool, isn't it? We weren't that big. I think we were like the size of like 60, like the biggest we had was like 72. Mm. Yeah, and your, your microphone's also like it's a little staticky. I don't know if you're covering the uh, covering anything. Let me see if I can change it. My apologies. Hey, you're good, man. It's all good. Technology is oh, yeah. sound a little better. Yeah, that sounds way clearer. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so you're in a you're in your high school. You have like a sixty man, sixty seventy person band, and you're still playing the drums, right? Yeah, and I started off on bass drum and. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. And it was kind of like, I, I kind of like after school, I just kind of stayed at like in my, in like the band hall mm. and just stay there until rehearsal. Cause um, my parents couldn't drive me to the, to the high school every time. Mm -hmm. So I was either like ask my friend or I just stay after school. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'll just stay after school. And it just kind of stuck with me. And now I'm, I still play drums. I play tenors specifically for quads, the really big drums that have like four dark drums. And then they're also really heavy. Um, yeah, I play those now. And I also teach uh, as a instruct drumline instructor at really high school also. So I, and I, and I've been in, in this activity for, for a really long time. Oh man. Oh, I feel old. <laughs> Why do you gotta remind me? <laughs> Bro, I'm literally older than you. Like, we're getting old. We're old heads now, man. Like, we're, uh, we're getting up there in age, man. We're 21 years old. We're getting up there in age. <laughs> doesn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just something that I've been doing for such a long time. And I've learned so much personally and, like, how to be, I don't know, funny enough, like, an act, like a responsible human being in a way. And, like, how to time manage, how to, I don't know, stay organized, how to at least be a, uh, at least a decent person in a way. Um, I think it's really incredible because, like, I mean, you were like balancing, you know, fraternity life, your research, working at the Ridley, and just like music. So it's really admirable that you know you did all that kind of stuff. Um, what do you think it is about music that like just draws you to it? Like, what is it? Like, what is it? And then, like, what is it about the drums that like you like so much? Like, how come you didn't pick up any other instrument? Well, I know you. I knew you dabbled with the bass, but you know, um. At least for music, it's kind of like, I don't know, as cheesy as it sounds, it's kind of like an escape in a way. So it's like, for me, it kind of pulls me into being in like the present moment in a way. And like, instead of being worried about like what's happening in the future or being upset with what happened like an hour ago, it's like, I don't know, it kind of sets my mind and saying, all right, all I got to worry about is sounding like a, like sounding good, like playing good rhythms, having good tone, at least on the bass guitar. Mm -hmm. And... And just like the sound, at least, at least the sound for bass guitar, like it really relaxes me. But at least for drums, it's like, I don't know, like for drums, it's, it's just really, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Because like, like you just very, play... um, It seems very um, organized, I guess. Like the drums, the drum seems like an instrument that's very like, like set in stone, I guess, in a way. You know what I mean? Like right. the drums, like it's. I, I see. I, I even even as myself who doesn't like play the drums or like know anything about music, I kind of see what you're saying. It's like kind of like I don't know. It's like cut and dry. I think the, the drums. 
it's like you kind of have to be you kind of have to be per, like precise and you have to be kind of like focused on what you're playing because rhythms don't change like the rhythms that are written on the page are like they're not going to change like either you play them in time you play them correctly um or you don't mm. and at least in drum core and like at least with uh, like auditions when you're auditioning for a drum line one thing they focus a lot is like rhythms like are you playing the right rhythms while also sounding or out while also creating like a nice tone not being too harsh not being too soft when you play mm -hmm. um but the really cool thing about drums is that you're able to kind of express visually in like very different ways so right. like in drum line there is like there's like east coast and like west coast kind of approach where east coast is like all wrists and it's kind of like aggressive in a way while west coast is more of like i don't know more chill i think more like more expressive hmm. um i guess another way to think about it is like more of like a i don't know it looks it's very flowy versus <laughs> east coast is very like strict in a way if you want to think of it like that yeah and i i know recently you just you you placed in a um a national tournament right a national um tournament i guess you would say yeah, my uh, high school, they competed um, virtually across, like, the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And we just s submitted a video of our show uh, to a judge, or to a panel of judges, and then they watch it, and then they kind of place us into different categories. So there's different categories, like music, and there's visuals, there's color guard, and percussion. And even though we didn't place too well, like it too high on like I think we placed like eighth out of like the twenty five schools that were there. Mm -hmm. Um, seeing that the percussion placed third out of the twenty five schools and like, and like the East Coast was just like I don't know it was just really cool because previous years we didn't really place that high. Mm. Um, I mean because the staff because we had a whole staff change like last actually two years ago. Um, because before it was a bunch of I think it was like high schoolers that were trying to that were teaching. Mm -hmm. Ridley and then a whole group of very reputable instructors came in um and after that the drum line and the percussion section started to just like soar up and mm -hmm. just like scores and it's just really cool seeing how they progress and how they're getting better because if you watch your sh marching band show from them like two years ago versus now it's just like I don't know, it's really cool seeing that progress right that's really awesome man congratulations on that on that well that really high finish I'm trying to, can you, I'm trying to, like, imagine, like, like, I'm trying to, like, put this into perspective, like, how big of a deal this is. So, okay, you competed, so you're, so, first of all, you wrote the music, right? You wrote the percussion for that, right? Uh, yeah. Part um, of it? Don't, yeah, actually, don't be modest here, you wrote it, didn't you? I did, yeah. Okay, Victor wrote, <laughs> yeah, Victor, Victor's gonna be modest, he's gonna be humble, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna egg him on and cheer him on here. So, Victor wrote the music. For the high school band to compete in this tournament right okay and for at least for the concussion side you finished third out of 25 were these are these 25 like other, other high schools like in the mid-atlantic region region or are we talking like all across the eastern seaboard from what i remember the high schools were mostly in the new england area mm -hmm. and i think around here and a little bit in virginia i'm not too sure 100 percent. i don't know where all the high schools are from but i definitely saw some schools from like the new england area mm -hmm. and then some in like the city area of philadelphia and some like closer to like pittsburgh and are you competing in schools like relatively to your size or like is this like anyone can submit anything relative to our size well that's pretty badass man congratulations on that dub um, thanks or at least placing high anyways you know that's awesome man um you, you think you'll continue to do music like after you graduate or like well i guess it's kind of a dumb question of course you will but like do you see your future like what do you yeah, see cool. yeah of course um i guess one of my goals is to write drumline music for like a drum corps or like for an independent group mm. um that's just something i've been wanting to do for a while but yeah, it's definitely going to be something I'm, that I'm going to be doing even after I graduate or when I work or if I go to graduate school. If, oh man, we're getting there. Before we get there, all right, so uh, the music stuff. Is there is there a video? You have the video, right? It's on YouTube, right? Yeah, there's a video of the show. What I can do is, what, what I can do is I can- uh, A minute show. Um, 
Yeah, what I can do is I can uh, I'll t I'll get the YouTube link and then just plug it into my uh to this YouTube channel, and then if people want to go see your um, performance. Then you're more than welcome to go do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll send that to you. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Of course. All right. So the big question. We're, we're going to go backwards now. We're going to go back into research here. The big. This is the big enchilada here because I know you're doing. I mean, you're you and Doctor Bot always doing cool stuff, and I talked to Doctor Bot earlier in the podcast. But now I want to hear your, the student side from it, working with Dr. Bot. So I guess we'll start and maybe like, you know, how you got into the research and like what ex exactly that you do um, and then like why it's important. And then what are you doing now? So I started, actually, let me pull back to chemical literature. It was like the one class where we had to do like, where we had to talk to professors about potential research mm -hmm. from like going it's, into junior senior year. Spring was it sophomore spring? Okay. Yeah. So for those who don't know, it's basically a course where chemistry students have to um, write a research paper on a topic, which whatever they want to write it write it on. But part of the course is you have to go speak to at least three professors in the chemistry department about like their research. So it's, and at okay, yeah. um, and at the time when I declared my chemistry degree, Dr. Bot was actually my advisor, and. I kind of read some of his old work, works with his previous students, and I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, I think I'd want to do research in organic chemistry, at least. I wasn't really interested in anything with, like physical chemistry or analytical. I just wanted to try doing Dr. <laughs> organic. Dr. Yang would be disappointed. <laughs> I, I know. That's but, right. I love those people, but uh, yeah, I'm not really a, I'm for the kind of same way here. But organic, I don't know, organic synthesis, I just thought it was really interesting, especially taking organic one and two, like the professors here who teaches mm -hmm. them, like Dr. Bond and Dr. Baston, it was just like, I don't know, they, they made the class really like fun in a way. Right. I mean, it was really hard, but if you put in the work, it you come out very just satisfied. It's one of those courses so, that like, I mean, like you and I, we're, I mean, we're both kind of, we're both basically organic chemists and like, it. it's like, it's super like, uh, uh, like relieving that's not the right word it's like so gratifying to like get things right in that class you know you know, you know what i'm saying yeah but uh but anyways so you took those courses and i just saw dr bot's work and he was doing stuff with alzheimer's and i remember the title does does drinking something about like drinking wine i, I totally forgot the fight the I, I, the salt, not the salt. <laughs> the salt fights in the wine. <laughs> but um, fights. but um, one of Dr. Bot's research uh, with Richard Connolly, one of his title had something with like wine in it. And I was like, that's interesting. Like wine could potentially help with Alzheimer's. So I went up to Dr. Bot and I said, I didn't really ask him. I kind of said to him, but I was like, I kind of, I want to do research with you. So then he we walked down through the... <laughs> I don't think it was that forceful, but <laughs> Victor, that was a... <laughs> Victor applying some assertion. <laughs> but he she walked me through the fourth floor of Kirk Bride, and then we talked about his research, and then I and I said I wanted to do it. So then fast forward a couple more months, and then we started doing research together through the summer undergraduate research, creative arts, creative activity. <laughs> Yeah, activities. Yeah, the circuit program. Really good program. Circuit program. If you're not in it already, really good program. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That was it. That's... There it is. That's entirely. All right. Good show, Victor. Was... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, obviously, now that we're begging the question, you know, what, what exactly did you do? So, what I do now is, at least for this year, I do greener synthesis of tarot still being derivatives, which then could be which then can be used as uh, potential drug candidates for Alzheimer's. Mm. Um, so terosilbine is a derivative of resveratrol, and resveratrol is commonly found in wines. Um, if you want to learn about the chemical structure, it's basically two um, aromatic rings, and it's connected by a double bond. Um, I also, real for, quick, I also, I assume you have a paper on this somewhere, maybe a poster, I can also include that. Uh, yeah, I have a poster. Okay, so I can include that in the uh, YouTube link if anyone wants to go see what these look like. More than welcome to. Okay, so you have yeah. aromatics connected by a, a double bond. Oh, 
And it also has two hydroxy groups in like the three five positions mm -hmm. on one of the rings. And um, for, if I remember correctly, I think there are it would be symmetric. Like both would be on the three five positions. But um, you you'll see it when it, if when you check out the poster. Mm -hmm. But per Terrell Stilbean and Resveratrol, they're or at least Resveratrol, it's very uh, well known in the chemistry community for being like for having a lot of like beneficial effects, like being anti-inflammatory, being, uh, anti and it's known for its anti-cancerous effects and just a whole bunch of good stuff. Like all the great stuff you want to hear about resveratrol. Pharmaceutical so, dream. Yes. So, but right now is uh, resveratrol, it's kind of expensive to buy by itself. Mm. And it's also kind of expensive to make. So for Terra still being, uh, it's by for Terra being we replaced the hydroxy group with a methoxy group or uh, O C H three if you want to go into the chemistry side, and with that it actually increases the bioavailability of the product, so mm. it'll be much easier for it to pass through uh, the body and for it to actually work. And Terra beans could also be a cheaper alternative to resveratrol. And for my research, we use a microwave to do our synthesis. Previously, we would um, take a mortar and pestle, and then we would use a uh, base. Like ancient we, times, the ancient times, the mortar and pestle. Yeah, originally we used a mortar and pestle to do our synthesis, but then for this year, we focus on using a microwave reaction, which is much faster, and also less of doing this for 30 minutes and having a sore arm by the end of the week. I remember summer of 2019, Victor would literally be in the lab with a mortar and pestle for 30 minutes to an hour, just grinding this stuff together. Just doing that. <laughs> Look at the flick of the wrist. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> After that now. Hey, I had some pretty I had some pretty big biceps by the end of the summer, so <laughs> I ain't complaining. Well, at yeah. least in the right arm. Left arm now. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> but for um, synthesis, we focus on using a Vitic reaction. And what a Vitic reaction does is that um, basically it ends with having a double bond. Um, er, like, so originally in our starting product, we wouldn't have a double bond, like a carbon-carbon double bond in our product or in our, our starting reagent. But then in our final product, we have this double bond, which when we turn back to resveratrol and terostilbean also has that double bond in it too. And what we do for the microwave synthesis is that we utilize uh, an aldehyde derivative a Vitic reagents, which is triphenylphosphine, and we use a base. And by combining them together, um, we put that in a vial, throw that in the microwave, and then we see that works. And it works. And we're very like we're very happy to put the results. Mm -hmm. Real quick though, so are you buying re Reservatrol, and then you, are you then synthesizing the derivative Tyrostilbean, or are you straight we're up synthesizing it? We're just straight up synthesizing the Terrell still being derivatives. Okay. okay. So that'll be in that'll be in the poster then. So we'll, we'll take a look at mm -hmm. that. It's all right. So cool. So then like what did you what was like what did you find? Like what was your some of your conclusions? So we wanted to see if the microwave worked, basically. Mm. And we wanted to see if we wanted to test a bunch of different aldehyde derivatives. Mm. Um and to see if the react if this Vitic reaction works in the microwave. And last year we used potassium hydroxide pellets. Um, but this year we replaced the base with potassium carbonate. Um, it's not as corrosive as potassium hydroxide. Mm. Um, and we used water as a solvent. And we just had a bunch of different aldehyde derivatives. We put it together and we just see if it worked. We ran it right through the IR. Um, because in the IR or the infrared spectroscopy, I don't know if you want to explain that. <laughs> it's kind of a lot. So. Infrared spectroscopy, you all can <laughs> up if you really want to, but basically it shoots infrared through a, basically a, a pyramid. And depending on what the functional groups there are, you can tell what's there. <laughs> it's really yeah. the down version of what it is. Yeah. And it'll show a certain frequency. So we wanted to see, um, in our final product, if we still had the aldehyde or not. Mm. And every time we ran this reaction, we would always see that the aldehyde peak is gone, I mean, which confirms that we did that reaction, which is really cool. 
also wanted to test the purity by um, checking its melting point. Uh, but the problem with our reaction is that it has triphenylphosphine oxide as a byproduct. And mm. with that byproduct, it's pretty difficult to separate out. Um, and that's kind of this, and for this year, we focused on trying to separate this impurity out. Because right. um, when we try to recrystallize, triphenylphosphine oxide can't really um, dissolve. Oh man, I don't remember the terminology. Oh, bad chemistry. You know, but, wait, so you can't um, use you can't use recrystallization with ethanol because of the triphenylphosphide. What was it called again? Triphenylphosphine oxide or TPPO. Okay. Um, can't really dissolve in many. It doesn't components. dissolve in ethanol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So we would, but we we figured out a way. Uh, we used hexane. And we tried mm -hmm. using, I'm trying to remember what else. It was, it's been a while. So I, I'm kind of rusty on all this, well, this stuff. Your, I assume this is your senior or uh, senior research then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I will, well, I'll bring you back sometime next semester and then you'll have better results, you know? At least you have oh, yeah. Clearer. So that's really cool, man. Um, so I'm curious, do you use, you didn't use any NMR for your products? We wanted to do, we wanted to use NMR, um, but. At the time, I didn't know how to uh, use the um, instrument, mm -hmm. and I couldn't really find time to meet with Dr. Baston or Dr. Van Bramer for them to teach me. And then, but then this semester, I took advanced of this in spectroscopy, and now I know how to use the NMR instrument and how to set it up. So now I can use it and see if I can so characterize. So what are the next steps again? Like, what, so what are you doing next? Like, where is the, what's the future of this, of your section of the project? So my plan for this is to kind of go back to square one and mm. focusing on one derivative, mm. one tarot still being derivative each time. And my kind of my goal is to kind of to character to purify it and then to characterize it using NMR. Um, just so we can we can confirm that we have our product. Right. And then we can do a bunch of calculations to see if we have for to um like how learn about a percent yield yes yeah yeah to see how green it is well man you got a full plate coming in the spring Ooh, I'm looking yeah. forward to your results on this no, um, no i'm really excited to get back into it because i haven't really focused it focused on it much this past semester well, and who, it what time do you have bro like right you know? <laughs> and yeah. with the summer we didn't really have much time either because yeah, of well, the summer, uh, pandemic yeah. but i'm really excited to get back into it <laughs> Yeah, I, I was talking to Dr. Bass and I was like, dang, like, stressful this semester, but I'm honestly kind of looking forward to it. I just wish, like, having a semester, like, where it's just you're in the research lab and that's only what you have to worry about, like, I'm, it's kind of, like, relaxing. Because, like, I remember, like, like, I would just listen to music or listen to a podcast as I'm in the lab doing stuff. Like, it's really cool, really relaxing. Yeah, yeah you're just kind of doing your own thing in a way. Mm -hmm. And do you have, actually, do you have any uh chemistry classes next semester i have instrumental um that's the only one i have so okay so yeah. we don't really have much chemistry classes for next semester yeah. but we yeah. got research going on mm -hmm. and you know we have all the background you know we have all the we have all the principles we took all the we took all the classes i didn't take instrumental but i kind of know most of the instruments anyway at this point so i'm looking forward to next semester i really am I truly am looking forward to it um yeah so all right so what do you think, what do you think you're going to do in the future? Like, what do you think you want to do after you graduate? Oh man, I've been thinking about this for like a month, yeah, <laughs> to be honest. Somewhere, right? Where are you entering right now? I'm entering at a uh, Kibo Biotech. Hmm. Um, they're one of their main products called Renadel focuses on supporting the kidney hmm. and they utilize it. They utilize prebiotic and probiotic, uh, bacterias mm -hmm. to support the kidney and they they've actually had a like a lot of success on it and what i do there is that i help with their shipping for the most part um because of recently because of this pandemic a lot of or and also um with the manufacturing uh issues the, mm -hmm. a lot some of the orders have been backed up and i'm kind of and i'm there to help out with boxing and shipping their products Again, chemical engineering edge finance right there, just uh, helping optimize your the shipping routes. Oh yeah, <laughs> but hey, just hey, it's, it's better. It's a good job to have, you know, as a as you're moving through undergrad. But so, 
Okay. So what do you think you want to do? The big question, big enchilada right here. Oh man, I'm not, I'm not really too sure. Cause like I, I, my original, I guess my plan so far is to take a gap year mm. and then I want to go into graduate school. But then actually today my uh, supervisor or my boss uh, asked, or not really asked me, but he said I should think about going about getting my PhD. And I literally spent the whole day just kind of like contemplating and I'm like, is a PhD worth it? I mean, oh yes. Um, For chemical like, engineering or chemistry? Chemistry. Hmm. I wanted to go more into chemistry. Uh, and he said that it looks like that I enjoy doing research and I also enjoy teaching and hmm. that a PhD would be a good idea. And I literally just like sat and like, <laughs> like at my desk, like boxing on the product. And I was just like in my own head, I was like, man, should I do a PhD? He's like, <laughs> and I kept, just kept watching videos and it, I don't know. So like, so far I do know that I want to go into graduate school. I do yeah. want to take a gap year. And that's kind of my plan after I graduate, mm -hmm. but specifically, uh, I'm not really too sure. <laughs> right. Well, still a lot of time to figure that out, man. When you have a, a BS in chemistry and chemical engineering, well, there's a lot of avenues you can go into. So definitely take your time thinking about it. But hey, look, I mean, I was applying to PhD programs. Like you already know, like I think that would be the route, like, uh, you know, especially if you like teaching and chemistry, like that's kind of the best of both worlds. And, but you'll think about it. So I look forward to whatever you decide on, you know. Yeah. And didn't you get accepted to FIT <laughs> I recently? Did, yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. And that's great. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I got accepted to Florida Institute of Technology for a PhD in chemistry. Um, wait, I'm waiting. I asked them like what their timeline was, like, you know, like what, you know, like, like when do you need an answer by, like what's your financial aid package looking like? So wait, no, and then they hear back. Um, so uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but it's looking pretty good right now. So yeah. Um, Artie, right, man, what, what do you think are some of like your favorite moments here at Widener? Some of my favorite moments. Favorite classes, professors. I guess one of, I guess one of the, my favorite moments was actually joining one of our fraternities on campus, fellow brother of Talk Alpha <laughs> Epsilon. <laughs> um, yeah, I, like I'll be honest, like I'm not too sure why I joined at first, because one of our um, brothers, uh, Fernando Forte, they just came up to me. He's like, "Yo, you should come by." To her house and you should hang and i was like okay sure but how'd also meet, i was like how'd you meet fern it was at oh man how did i meet him i think it was at a party freshman year i, I just like talked to him and i like, thought he was pretty cool mm. and then sophomore year um i saw him at the what was it the fair was it what was it called again meet the fraternities i don't know uh involvement fair involvement fair yeah yeah i saw him again at involvement fair and then he just said, yo, swing by this weekend or tonight if you're free. And I was like, sure. And I just hung out there and I just talked to the brothers and I just, I, I don't know. I just liked their vibe and I just thought they were really cool. And yeah, that was like one of my favorite moments and just like just hanging out with them also. And then like being over at their house was kind of like, kind of like my relaxation space or like kind of my safe space in a way. Mm -hmm. So like I, like literally every weekend I would just go and just hang out with them, like every like weekend, mm. and it was just I don't know I just had a great time it was awesome I just had a lot of fun being with them, and I don't think I would be the same person as I am if I didn't join Teak, right. because one thing I really valued from joining Teak was being okay with kind of doing nothing. Right. Cause like, you know, me for being like really busy all the time, you know, me for like running around trying mm -hmm. to juggle like too many things at once. Right. But like for joining Teak, like I literally just appreciated that, appreciated them for just literally kind of doing nothing. It's like all they did was play, like play video games all the time or not all the time, but they played video games. And that was kind of like my, I guess, like connection to them. Cause like I used right. to play video games a lot before I joined marching band. And I would just go over there, hang out with them. And then we just, I don't know, it was really fun. I remember that. I mean, I wasn't at the house um, that much, but because I had joined the semester before you did. 
Um, but Alistair, Doug, and Fern were just so chill and low-key. Like, they got their stuff done, but they knew when it was time to just, like, relax. And I think that was the atmosphere that they built. And anyone could just walk into the house and you would find them just chilling, like, literally chilling. And, and there was no stress, nothing to worry about. And it was and, the vibe that they presented, you know? Yeah. And it was just kind of like, it's okay to relax sometimes. Like, you don't have to be so busy all the time. You don't have to be running around being stressed all the single day. Just, just like, take some time to just hang out. Right. You know? Yeah. And obviously, like, I mean, I mean, we could talk about training life all day and all night. Like, literally, all the opportunities that you get from it. Like, man, that's, that's a whole other episode in itself. But, um, yeah. I, I I agree with you. I definitely, if I had to add up all of my entire moments, like during Talk Cap Epsilon, it's definitely up there. It's definitely like top top two for me. Probably is number one, along with ASB, probably. But it's really good. Definitely. What were some of your, like your favorite classes? You think favorite favorite like professors and like something you like reflect on? One of my favorite classes actually was this semester. It was synthesis and spectroscopy. Mm. It. I really learned a lot as like a chemist and as just like a student, mm -hmm. um, because in the beginning of the semester, they kind of pushed most of like the synthesis, um, the lab work in the beginning, because we were, we were concerned if the school was going to lock down or not, or like close down because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, so we decided to do the synthesis really early on. And then once we realized everything was going to be okay, we focused more on spectroscopy and that was kind of like the meat, the, the meat and potatoes of the class because Dr. Van Bramer, oh my gosh, he like <laughs> threw so much stuff at us and he did guys to handle it. Yeah. And he, like, he just, I mean, we just sat and we talked for like four hours learning how to interpret and different NMR tech or how to do NMR techniques and how to interpret them. Mm. Um, because we learned how we learned about carbon or we, we've learned about carbon and proton spectro nmr spectroscopy and organic and then we went on to learn about cozy um hmqc hmdc and then he and then there's like this whole like can of worms of just spectroscopy and there's like you literally go to graduate school to learn about spectroscopy because there's so much you can do with it right to interpret um different graphs to see what chemicals you have yeah and a lot of that which is really, I don't know, like nerdy, as nerdy as it sounds, like I had so much fun <laughs> learning about all of that and learning how to interpret um, different unknowns. Like he would just give us a graph with like, um, and he said, all right, figure out what this unknown is. And some days where it's, it's a really difficult class because it's just like, it's just so much. You yeah, just looking at graphs and like spectra, like I'm sure it's like hurt your eyes, you know? <laughs> Pretty much, but another another really cool thing about the class is that we worked a lot on our reports too, like how we present our narrative into this report. Because if, because most of us, I think we're gonna go, who are actually who took the class are gonna go into the chemical or the chemistry industry, and like their feedback is just just invaluable. Like honestly, it's like I've and it and I when I read my first draft from the beginning of the semester and reading my like final draft, it's just like there's a huge difference and right. it's just and i felt like i've gotten so much better as like a student yeah because of the because of this class like time management and how to actually like speak in like you know the america like acs like terminology like what are they looking for like this that stuff's like really important definitely real quick for the viewers you kind of just want to explain what like nmr is like it, it stands for nuclear magnetic resonance um but just so do you want to maybe explain it here a little bit uh if i remember correctly correct me if i'm wrong here but i think this is how it works so basically you, let's say you have an unknown right um and you would add a add a um solvent to it so you can use dmso or uh chloroform whatever you, whatever dissolves your product you put it in this glass tube and that tube goes into this big machine really big machine um and basically you have these magnets that hold the unknown that hold the unknown solution in this magnetic field. And it takes the energy to do that. And then when you remove the magnetic field, it releases energy to go back to whatever it was before. And you can read those measurements and you can figure out how to, what molecule you have. And that's basically NMR. Yeah, like, 
and very simple terms to people who don't know about chemistry, I, I would agree. Um, yeah. Let's say for like methane, like, or like CH4. Mm -hmm. um, at like, if you put those, if you have like the carbon and you have like the protons around like the carbon, they would emit a certain frequency uh, in a magnetic field. And those protons would, and like, I don't know, if you learn, if, if some of you have taken physics too, you learn about magnetic fields and a proton kind of distorts the magnetic field in a certain way. So let's say we have, um, was it ethanol? Um, or methanol. And actually let's do, let's do ethanol. So no, oh, okay. The protons on the carbon, like the CH3, those those protons would emit a certain frequency, which then be distorted by the CH2 connected by that. Mm. And and there's also that OH group, that hydroxy group, and those protons are gonna affect that CH2 group and the CH3 group. And you have this whole like magnetic kind of like orb or like kind of mush or cloud in a way. And all of that's like in each of the protons the carbons are going to be distorted in a certain way right it's, it's really like mind screwy or as it sounds really confusing but honestly you take a look at a spectra it's it's it, not it's really not that complicated um, yeah but the way the, the way how the way it works though yeah um and how somebody like figured it out as uh dr van bramer says um and he if you can't really explain he just says it, it's just black magic <laughs> it's the uh the dark matter <laughs> yeah Pretty much. <laughs> Basically, uh, we put this stuff in a, in a big machine and then these uh, spectra come out and, you know, that's what you got to know. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, what you have. Alrighty. Um, what's some, of, what's like some advice that you give to like, um, you know, like students, prospective students? For prospective students? Or just in, um, or whatever. In general, I guess an advice I have for, I guess, for prospective college students is to really just like, I don't know. Just just take the time and just really focus on yourself for like some time. Like some like right now in like I guess our cult current culture is that we're very busy. We like to be busy. We like to do a lot because it makes us look good in a way. Mm. But what is but in the end, is that really gonna I guess help you like mentally in a way? So I remember I watched um it was like this Instagram story of this mu um of the musician's mom. Uh, Jacob Collier's mom, and she said, if you can spend 10 minutes kind of like looking through social media and kind of comparing yourself to other people instead of, you know, and just like just looking at other people's posts and other people's lives, it's about like, how do you, how can you take 10 minutes to kind of do nothing and to kind of like look at yourself and reflect for 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. And like, it sounds really simple, but it's such a difficult thing if you're such a busy person all the time, because I don't know. I don't know about me, but for some people that I know, like it's hard to kind of like sit down and do nothing because you always want to kind of distract yourself in a way. It's like, it's so easy just to pick up the phone and go on social media or go on TikTok for like four hours. Right. But then it's like social media, at least for me, the way I kind of like think of it is that you're literally kind of, I don't know, for me, it's like you're seeing other people's lives in a way, but it's like, how, how about yourself? It's like, how do you see yourself? And when I like talk to some of like my drumline students, I, I can kind of see that like, and like, especially in high school, like education, like they're really pushing these like kids to do a, like a bunch of AP classes, like three AP classes, four AP classes. Um, and that's just a lot for them, like mentally. And this is what constantly, saying, or Ridley? yeah, some of, really? um, one of my oh. students. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but, and even in like my high school at Happer Horsham, like I see that they're trying to push all these students to take all these really difficult courses in high school, but for what, you know, it makes the school look better, but like, does it make the student feel better in a way? And like, I notice like a lot of students are very, um, I guess the younger gener generation, oh, that's weird to say <laughs> the younger yeah. generation yeah. is like, people. they're like constantly just comparing yourselves to other. And if you do one wrong thing, they like kind of break down in a way. And I was just like, yeah, really and I'm just like, what's wrong? And I was like, and they're just like, I'm like stressed. Like I'm so like tired. And I like, I always, and I always wanted to ask, like want to ask them, it's like, are you like doing stuff for yourself at least? Like, do you spend some time 
to really dial back kind of see how you're doing right like it's like some days like for me like i feel really like upset for no reason and i don't know why but um before i would always just like go on my phone i'd always just like use instagram or like scroll through facebook right and just like distract myself from feeling sad mm-hmm. but like and until like now it's like whenever i feel sad i'm like all right it's time to be sad and like it's all right <laughs> it's all right and it's gonna be okay like at the end like I, some days i feel anxious some days i feel like angry for no reason but it's just like I don't know. You spend a lot of time avoiding, like, com- like a lot of time, like, fr- like avoiding those, I don't know, negative or discomforting feelings in a way. Right. You like dismiss them, I guess. Yeah, and you that's get, why I don't. You get lost in like social media. It's really true. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it's like you never spend a lot of time looking or like taking care of yourself or really just doing nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're always on the phone, kind of. Um, the way I see it, distracting yourself from doing something productive. You know, right. like you can't, cause like, I don't know, like I don't see a lot of, I don't know a lot of people, but like until recently, I like, I actually never read a lot of books until like this past year, until this yeah. pandemic. Cause I'm like, well, instead of just scrolling through TikTok and just like laughing at like a bunch of random stuff, it's like, why, why I, I should do something productive with myself and learn. So. Yeah, I think um, I agree with a lot you're saying, man. Like, I think mental health is extremely important. Um, I was never, I, I usually never, I, I, I'm i blessed that I never suffer from like anxiety and depression, but I recognize that those things are real and you know, people suffer for that. Um, and it's important to take care of yourself first and foremost. Um, but man, like, especially now, like the political climate, like going on quarantine, everyone's going crazy. And, you know, you look on social media and it's like, oh, here we go again. Like what, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, All right. But there's just so much going on and it's just, I don't know. I just, for this perspective students, just like take some time to literally just sit down and like kind of get away from the phone and right. try to like reflect. I don't know. I like this past year, I've done a lot of just reflecting mm-hmm. and just seeing how I'm doing because sophomore year and junior year, I was always busy, 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 busy. And I was always, I felt like I was known as a guy who would be really busy and who'd try to juggle a bunch of jobs while also taking a huge credit load while also trying to not fail my classes. And right. I, but I never really took the time to just sit down and check in with myself, you know? I got almost all, I'm some, sometimes I'm like used to having others be the one. And like, I will, like some days I like want others to check in on me, right. but it's like, some days, like, that's not going to happen. You know, other people have their own lives to deal with. Mm-hmm. And if you're busy all the time and you don't have the time to kind of recharge, then it's like, oh, that's just going to, like, blow up. And, like, that, that balloon is just going to blow up real big and it's just going to pop one day. I, I, I think this is this is true for myself. Or I'm sure it's true for a lot of other students. Like, sometimes, like, when I'm sitting down, especially in this semester, like, you know, you're sitting on the laptop for hours. And let's say you're studying for a course for two hours, like, Okay, you did two hours of good studying. Let's say you study for a good two hours. And, but I know some people are like, oh, I got to keep going. I got to keep studying. But like, they'll take, like, they'll go on their phone and check Snapchat, Instagram, all this stuff. And it's like, like, just time out for a second. Like, reflect on this. Like, is it really beneficial for you to be checking on your phone right now? Like, you just studied for two hours. Like, you did a great job. Like, that's good work. Don't ruin it by like, like, almost like goofing off, you know, like, Put away the phone, put away the studying and go like some like else, you know? Right. And one thing that like I really took to heart, um, at least this year, was really going back to like my old hobbies that I did, like marching band, video games, uh, music, and all of that, I kind of just took in and I just kind of like hugged it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this again because... I really miss playing video games all the time. And like some people think of it as like, I was like, oh, that kid's just like dorky. He's kind of lazy. All he does is play video games. But like in the end, it's, just, it's a hobby, you know? Like a lot of things are ho- like hobbies, like fishing. Like you're fish, like when you're like some people fish, some people fix their cars and some, and that's just a hobby, you know? Right. Like just because you're playing video games or playing Call of Duty um, and like, I guess in like a, yeah, as long as you don't like overdo it, you do it every single day. Like you gotta, it's just learning how to balance all these 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, because I mean, I play like I play video games. Like when I'm like I'm done. Like, you know, I study. And it's like okay, I just did some good studying. Let me go take a break. Like, let me just check out for a little bit and you know get lost in the world of video games because it, it's really true. Like you can for sure or read sometimes I read. I don't know something else. Yeah, just as long as you're not comparing yourself to others. Yeah, you, know, you gotta. That's that. You have to, one of the books I'm reading is called 12 Rules for Life, and one of the rules is um, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to, to someone else's today. And, I mean, I mean, God, like, that is so true. Like, work on yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely. It took me a really, really long time to finally understand that. Um, because, you know, you can, you can just say, like, oh, stop comparing yourself to other people. But it's so much hard. It's so much easier said than done mm -hmm. in a way. You know, and that's something for you to figure out. Right. And everyone's going to figure it out, man. Everyone will. Take your time. Oh, yeah. All right, Victor. Well, I want to thank you so much for hopping onto the show. I remember I asked you back in October, and you're like, eh, nah, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but um, you said you were too busy. That may or may not be true. I'll let you, I'll let you answer that one. But um, <laughs> we got you on today. And so I want to thank you for hopping on. It was good talking to you, man. Always good to yeah, see I want to thank you. Thank you for having me. This is this is really fun. I, I really enjoyed. I don't know. It's, this is my first podcast, so it's like I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Being able to do this kind of stuff. Then, you know, you're just talking to me, honestly. Like it's you know, at the end of the day, you're usually talking to me. If anyone else wants to hear us use science jargon and music, then by all means. But oh, I'm yeah. I'm, it's always good to see you. Um, but yeah, guys. So that was episode, I think, fourteen. I don't know what we're at right now, but. Um, we're on the next episode. Um, episode 14. Who? Oh. Yeah, isn't that weird? Um, but yeah, if you like the stuff, make sure you like and subscribe. Send to your friends. But then uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thank you, everyone. You left in the dust, unless I stuck by you. You're a sunflower. I think you love me too much. Or you'd be left in the